you can just tell Josh Allen is like, let's let's pretend this didn't happen because they just weren't they weren't explosive on Sunday night. The Buffalo Bills weren't. Uh, no touchdowns. Uh, they didn't score until the third quarter. Jay, it, it's unbelievable. And even that interview, it, it's like, oh, like such a relief yeah. when you'd kind of like to see this team's mentality be the opposite. Like, hey, we're coming to New York. They just got drilled. They're struggling on all fronts. They're super banged up. Let's beat the heck out of them and then move on. But yeah. instead, you talk about explosiveness in the offense. This offense looked like completely out of sorts, very, very poor. And to me, the game plan was so confusing. They ran the ball later on in the second half, especially incredibly well. They've got this dynamic player in James Cook. Get this guy the rock. He's got a good number two guy there in Murray. Run the ball a little bit, you know, yeah. get other players involved in the pass game. But instead, it was like, hey, we're going to drop back and sling it to Stephon Diggs, which is a good idea, but they have so many other weapons. They become, again, and I've said this to you numerous times, but they've just become locked in. we got to get Diggs the ball, yeah. and then it becomes a scramble. And today, the scrambles worked. Outside of one pick, I mean, the touchdown there was an outrageous play, but they're not going to always work, especially when you're playing defenses that aren't the New York Giants. It, it, I can't, I'm at a loss of words. <laughs> and you alluded to it, um, they get beat by the Jags last week in London. You know they're coming back. They're licking their chops at this Giants team that had lost three straight going in. You're thinking they're going to be fantastic. They do pull out the win, but a couple of weeks after that blowout victory over Miami where you were thinking, man, this now this is the Buffalo Bills team we want to see. Now two weeks later, how are you feeling about this Bills team? Terrible. <laughs> I'm feeling terrible because first and foremost, they've had two really tough injuries on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. Now, they're still playing well defensively. I mean, this team, not saying much because the Giants' offense isn't great, but they had a very, very great game on defense. But this offense is so wildly inconsistent that it worries me because if they play a team with a great offense, the reality is with White out at cornerback and Milano out at middle linebacker, they're going to struggle at times. I think the D-line will be able to, you know, shield some of their issues but this defense is going to struggle against some great teams. This offense needs to be a juggernaut. They need to be consistent. They need to be, okay, here's our foundation of plays, and if we need to, we can get Josh Allen scrambling and finding guys we've never targeted before. But for them to come out and put this performance against the Giants is very disheartening if you're a Bills fan. And if you're a Giants fan, the end of the first half was disheartening because, well, Brian Dable was – he throws more electronics than any coach in Which the I history love. of the NFL. <laughs> I love. I love that, Jay. He was mad. He was so mad. And that's how you know I'm not putting this one on Dable. He is on the headset, and he, he goes right to, you know, the OC there and just starts ripping them. Yeah. But if you watch here, watch the entire team, including Tyrod. There's no urgency. Right now, it should be screaming, clock, clock, or kill, yeah. whatever their term is. Those two, three seconds are vital. It's like, oh, now all of a sudden everyone realized, oh, my goodness, we might not actually get points here. And yeah. you sit here, and these are things that, I mean, you see him screaming at his coaching staff, throw, we miss a headset throw, we might get a tail end of something. There it Gable is. knows that how bad that is and how that's on the players, yeah. how that's on the coaches. You prepare for this all the time in this league. Jay, every Saturday, you stroll out there in tennis shoes, shorts and a T-shirt on every team I've ever been on, and you work, okay, end of the half, we've got two plays called in the huddle, or, hey, if we don't get this, we got a clock. This is stuff that should be communicated, and all 11 guys in the field should know exactly what's going on. Somehow, zero of the 11 <laughs> know what's happening. And Taylor's a veteran. Like, Taylor's, you know, yeah. he's been around for a while. So that's Just, what's really surprising about it. For at me. this level, you should not see mistakes like that. Both undefeated teams fall on Sunday. We start with San Francisco. Last week, you said Brock Purdy might be a top five quarterback in this 49ers offense. Are you still a believer now? 1,000%. Yeah. I mean, first and foremost, all these people that are jumping to just be like, oh, Brock Purdy can't get it done. Brock Purdy can't do this, can't do that. This is this guy's first time ever trailing. Okay, did he play well? No. But hear me out. He gets the ball back on a two-minute drive without Debo, without CMC, his two best weapons, manufactures a drive against statistically the number one defense in the NFL, goes right down the field, 
throwing the ball and gives a kicker a shot from dead center 41 yards and he was playing too much ping pong this week wasn't <laughs> focused in and can't get the job done okay I understand Brock Purdy didn't have incredible numbers today but anyone who's out there saying you know this guy's going to be a problem for them down the road it's the most ridiculous take I've ever heard what did we all think he was going to go 6 17 and 0 new season 17 and 0 and yeah. just play incredible every single game well, I mean, he's never lost in the regular season. That was his first loss ever. He shouldn't have lost today. Right. Yeah. I mean, the kicker kicks the field goal. We're not even talking about that. And the Eagles loss. Now, that was it because Jalen Hurts, you know, we alluded to it, did, did not play well at all. Does the loss fall on him? The loss definitely falls on him, but I don't think he played as bad as we all feel like he did. You know, right. to me, they needed to run the ball more efficiently. That's their bread and butter. They, they barely ran the ball with their running backs. I think they had 32 total yards. But if you look at these interceptions, I mean, the first one here to Goddard, this is not on Jalen Hurts. This is a play that, you know, wouldn't have been a first down, but it is what it is. Here, again, I mean, you like him to feel some of the pressure, but is this a bad decision? Like, we will never know. This, though, Jay, hear me out. You're up two points. There's two minutes left in the game. It's third and nine. This is where I think a guy of his stature yeah. needs to realize situational football. And I'm going to pose something to everybody listening out there. In that situation, sometimes I feel like when you're an offense that has struggled, you know, in this game, they feel like they should have played better. There's frustration. You end up making that decision. But the really mature guys that can block out all the noise, they take a sack there. And the reason I say that, the Jets have no timeouts. Right. They have yet to score a touchdown. And you're going to punt the ball with a minute left, probably get within the 10-yard line. It's a good punt underneath the five. And now you have Zach Wilson, who hasn't thrown for 200 yards, needs to go 98 yeah. <laughs> without really being throwing in the middle because you'll just burn way too much time. Right. So my point is that's a situation where if you're Jalen Hurts, as much as it pains you to kind of say, hey, they got us, yep. you cannot make that decision because in my opinion, I think a lot of other opinions, if you give Zach Wilson the ball and you have to go 95 yards to win a game with no timeouts in under a minute, he's probably not doing it. You're feeling quite comfortable with that decision, I think. I you're think feeling, that's fair. You're feeling the odds are in your favor. <laughs> and, and then we see Aaron Rodgers throwing and looking good. Like, you know, before the season, everyone knows you picked the Jets to win the Super Bowl. Looking at Rodgers and the way he's throwing, are you thinking to yourself, man, if this guy hadn't been injured, this team – might be the best team in the NFL right now. That's how I feel. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of people out there that, you know, they maybe don't like Aaron for off the field issues or, or whatever it is. But I can guarantee you that every person in the NFL wildly respects Aaron Rodgers' ability. And whether they like him as a person, it's neither here nor yeah. there. This guy has so much ability at that position. It is unbelievable. The talent is it's endless. And they want to say, oh, he's old. He's washed up. This is the 2021 NFL MVP. Right. <laughs> and you're telling me with the small amount of bright spots we've seen throwing the ball these last few weeks with Zach Wilson, imagine Garrett Wilson with Aaron Rodgers slinging it to him. Yeah. And Aaron Rodgers with this defense. And Aaron Rodgers with Brees Hall, who's now healthy. And he's got his two safety blankets in Cobb and Lazard. You're telling me that this guy wouldn't find ways to put up points and he doesn't have to score that many because the defense is clearly doing a lot. Yeah, and, and just having his presence around the team in uniform. I really think, Jay, that as corny as this may sound, him just being on the sideline <laughs> changes the energy. It does. <laughs> I agree. I agree. 100%. Does this start by the Patriots in that game? Does that fall on Bill? It, it definitely falls on Bill. Because to me, the biggest issue they have right now is this coaching staff. And let's go back the last couple of years. What's strange about Bill Belichick's hires here is you look at last year, you take a guy like Matt Patricia and you make him your OC. Matt Patricia goes to Detroit, inherited a 9-7 and team, took the Lions to be 6-10, and 3-12-1, and was fired in the next season. He's a defensive coordinator. You make him an OC. Joe Judge goes to the Giants. Yeah. It's an abomination. They, he gets rid of those two guys, and then he goes to Bill O'Brien this year to save the offense. Again, this guy was in Houston, and it was awful. And this is what's crazy to me. I said we talked about this play. Look at this throw. This guy thinks he's Derek Jeter. Where is he going? He literally jumps off one foot like he's Derek Jeter at oh. shortstop in 1997. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And 
what's unbelievable about to me, Jay, is that this is not what Bill Belichick preaches. Like, he's not a, I always say, use this term recess or schoolyard football. He's a fundamentals guy. Yeah. He's a foundational football guy. They have terrible situational football right now, no awareness, and they have a quarterback who's turning the ball over every single game to the point where he's now scrambling and doing jump throws across his body, missing a tight end. And again, they lose by four points today and just puke all over themselves repeatedly. I, I'm amazed Mac continues to be their starting QB. Just goes to show you the lack of options they must have. How about Detroit, though? The, first of all, the fans are traveling. A lot of Lions fans in Tampa on Sunday. Yeah. But this is a game, you and I always talk about the old Lions, you know, uh, under Patricia, guilty, under yep, other, right? Yep. And that was a game that the old Lions probably would have lost. But here we go. They bought in, as you said. You nailed it, Jay. The old Lions don't do what they did today. You know, they have a big win. They're on the road. You look at this team, what was even more impressive to me is their identity is this O-line in, in Montgomery in the run game. Montgomery gets banged up. He gets hurt. He's done. Gibbs, their backup running back, they just drafted. Didn't dress. These guys don't miss a beat. Yeah. Jared Goff is out here ripping. It is unbelievable the performance he put in. And it's not just one guy. We saw this earlier with Reynolds throwing this massive block and Amon Ross St. Brown finishing it off. I mean, that's wow, to me when that you block. see that as a member of your team putting that kind of effort in when he doesn't have the ball, that's how you know this guy's sacrificing. Again, no run game or no running back, no problem. We're going to find the new guy. But, Jay, this play right here, old Lions, they score the touchdown to Jameson Williams. They'd probably give up a kick return here. Right. New Lions, yo! Yeah. Oh, my! Oh, my! Physical. Danny Campbell. Danny Just Campbell. <laughs> That's physical right yeah. there. And I'm yeah. telling you, you might think it's a small play. Oh, Luke, they just made a play on kickoff. Absolutely not. Every time your kickoff team rips down the field like that, especially when you just scored a big TD and you, you lay the wood to somebody like that, it energizes every single person on that sideline. The old Lions never had that. And that, to me, is why I'm now starting, hopefully they don't burn me, I'm still a little nervous, <laughs> to jump on this bandwagon with my guy, Tim. I love because it. this is the best the Lions have ever looked in my lifetime. I